Alright, in this video I'm going to tell you why almost everybody is using their backlight wrong in Linux. So your backlight, or you could just call it your screen brightness, as the light behind your screen, probably on your laptop, you can control it with the brightness keys if you're on a laptop. And if you're using Windows, Mac OS, or probably even GNOME or KDE, one of these big desktop environments, then it's probably going to work as you would expect. But I'm on a window manager right here, so I kind of have to configure things myself. And so what a lot of people do whenever they have a window manager running is they use some terminal utility, maybe something like X Backlight. This is a very popular one. And then they just increase and decrease it by 10%. So if I run this command, it will decrease the screen brightness by 10%. I can keep going until it's all the way down to zero. And you can increase it in the same way. And then you would just bind these keys into your favorite keyboard shortcut utility. And you might be thinking, it's as simple as this, right? Well, not quite. Because this is what I was doing for a long time. And to be honest, I didn't really like it that much because I always felt like something was wrong. So whenever you use something like this, if the brightness is near 100%, so 100%, 90%, 80%, then it goes down in brightness very gradually, but then all of a sudden when you get to the bottom, when it's getting dimmer, it just jumps down dramatically. And to make matters worse, it even goes down until the screen is completely black, which is probably not something you ever want. And so you can do something like this, but it just feels wrong to me. I would like things to have a much more gradual jump down instead of this weird curve where it starts from not going down at all and then jumps down dramatically. And so I thought this was just an annoyance I had to live with and I, I used this probably for years without realizing it. But recently I've been reading more about this and I found this nice article. Uh, I'll leave a link to this in the description. This is a very nice article someone wrote basically explaining that human perception is not linear. So I'm not gonna go super into the science and math behind all of this, but basically what you need to know is that the way your eyes perceive light is not just linearly. So this is linearly, so this is you jumping down, this is the way your command line utility probably does it, but this is not the way that we perceive it with our eyes. So if I decrease the brightness of the screen, maybe 50% right here, or to be more specific, the illuminance of the screen, so if I've set my screen brightness to 50%, you might think it would look like 50%, but to our eyes, it only looks like 80% actually. So it's actually kind of a logarithmic kind of curve. So that's why it barely changes at the top ranges and at the bottom ranges, it just plummets. And that's just because it's the way our eyes work. It's not a bug or anything. That's just the way humans work. And so instead of just jumping down by maybe 10% at a time or 5% at a time, what we really wanna do is kind of do it exponentially. So at the top, we would make big jumps because we can't really see the changes unless we make big jumps at the start. And then at the bottom, we wanna make really kind of smaller jumps right here. And so this person who wrote this article wrote this nice script down here in Python, which I have used before. It is a good script, but I actually wanna show you a different utility that you can use in this video that I actually prefer. It's called Brillo right here. So this is another command line utility, kind of like X Backlight or maybe something you've heard of before. It just has a few more features, but most importantly, it has the ability to scale down in a human friendly kind of way. So it actually looks like the way we perceive with the logarithmic curve. Well, that's enough math, you don't need to worry about any of that. All you need to do is install this and run a couple of commands and then you are good to go. So first let's install Brillo right here and you can install it in the Arch user repository, but I don't actually believe it's at the latest version right now. I don't know, maybe somebody will update that in the future, but as of right now, you do have to build it yourself, which is actually very easy. So let's just clear all this out, CD into my repos folder and let's get clone this repository right here. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well, but you would just clone copy this and git clone this repository right here. So now we have that done. Let's see the into here. And then we just want to run make to build everything. And then let's install it with sudo make install and then add dot set GID. And what this just does on the end here is it just makes it usable for any user in any group 
Otherwise, your user would have to be in the videos group. I didn't want to change all the groups for my user. So this is a way to just make it work for any user. It doesn't matter who you're logged in as. So let's just run this and it should be done. And now, of course, we can use it just by running Brillo. If you just run Brillo right now, it will just tell you what percentage the screen's brightness is at. It's at 50% right now. Let's run Brillo. And then dash A is going to increase the brightness by 10%. Now, this is going to jump up 10% in the same linear way that all the other backlight utilities do. So if you want to make it human friendly, you can add the dash Q option as well. So this will use a exponential scale that will scale it according to your perception. Let's run this. The screen got 10% brighter. And we can also run dash U in order to decrease the brightness. Now it's getting a bit darker. And if that's all you want, then all you would do is you would bind these commands into your favorite keyboard shortcut utility. For me personally, I use SXHKD. So let's go into my config file for this and find my brightness keys. And so you would just change your brightness keys right here. I think they're always going to be this right here, XF86, Moan, Brightness Up and Brightness Down. Those are going to be the keys on your keyboard. So you would just change this to something like Brillo, dash A, 10, or whatever percent that you want to jump by. If you want to make smaller jumps by, let's say, 5%, you can do like that. Also pass in dash Q. And of course you would do the same thing down here with dash U. And if that's all you want, congratulations. You now have nice human friendly uh, brightness keys. But we can do a little bit more. Now I actually use this script instead of the default commands that you would run. So I just have this bash script called change brightness here. That'll just send me a notification and tell me what level the brightness is at right now. So if I run it, it'll give me some notification like this. And so let me just exit out of this and open up that right now. And all this is doing is, is getting the current brightness level with Brillo, rounding it to the nearest number, and then just sending me a notification. If you want, I'll leave a link to this in the description. I also have another video on notifications if you want to check that out. But that's what this is doing if you want notifications as well. But next, we can also set a minimum value that we want our screen brightness to be. So we can run Brillo dash C and dash C is going to be the minimum brightness right here and dash S option will set it to whatever value that we put in here so if I want the minimum value to be 2% then I can put this here and whenever I try to lower my brightness past 2% it just won't go anymore so I can put something like 5% here maybe and if I go all the way down you can see it stops here at 5% it will not go any lower if I change something like two, it will go lower. So that is nice, so your screen doesn't go completely black. I don't really want my backlight turning completely off. So this is a nice way to set a minimum if you want. And you can just set it once and then it'll remember it forever. You can also set a maximum brightness as well. Uh, I forget what it is, but if you want a complete reference, you can go to man Brillo, and I can go to dash C right here. That sets the minimum brightness right here. And with dash M, you can set the maximum brightness. I'm okay with the maximum brightness, so I'm not going to touch that. But this can do a lot of other things that I'm not going to touch over in this video. You can get the keyboard backlight as well. If you have a keyboard with some light on it, you can change it with this program as well. And finally, one more useful option. If you don't want it to just jump between brightness levels, so you can't really see it in the recording, but it is just jumping between brightness levels with no fade in effect. So if you want to have it fade a little bit, then you would use this dash U option. And you're going to want to pass in how many microseconds you want it to fade for. Uh, if you don't know, microseconds are one millionth of a second, which is a very, very short amount of time. I think it would have been better if he had made it milliseconds, but this is what we have to do. So if we want to lower the brightness by 50% over 150,000 microseconds, I think this is 150 milliseconds. So basically 15% of a second, and it'll give you a nice fade effect if you would prefer having that. For me personally, I don't care about that, but you can do that if you want to make it look a little bit nicer. That's it. There's not a whole lot to this. I showed you everything that you need to know. You would just assign this to some keyboard shortcuts like I showed you. Maybe set a minimum and a maximum, and then you're good to go. You never have to worry about it again. Set it and forget it. 
But hopefully this video helped you overcome the weird issue I was having, which was actually just linear brightness instead of logarithmic brightness. Because for me, if I wanted to watch a movie late at night on my laptop with the lights turned down, then basically before I was unable to get it down that far. So I would either have to watch the movie when it's a little bit too bright or in complete darkness. And now with this program, I can get a lot more granular control over this, which I really like. That's it. Now you can watch as many movies in the dark as you want.